Hello, welcome finally to the advanced portion of the introductory R for Economist uh, section of the videos. Now, most of these videos, I'm going to be going through something called the Tidyverse, uh, which includes the very, very useful packages dplyr and ggplot2. Uh, however, this video in particular, I'm going to be covering something else entirely. I'm going to be covering how to run simulations in R. Uh, now, this is something that you typically don't learn in your undergraduate curriculum, and I think that's a little bit of a shame because this is something that I do all the time. Uh, so basically, think about what we're doing in econometrics, right? We're taking some data, we're applying some assumptions to that data, right? Um, and then we're getting an estimate out of it, right? So we do things like we're going to run a linear regression. What do we assume in a linear regression? Well, we assume that the uh, independent variables are not correlated with the error terms. We assume that they're maybe homoscedastic. We assume that they're normally distributed. We assume that the actual form is linear. All these assumptions, right? We make these assumptions and we see what happens, right? And we, 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 get, a, we get a result that is correct, conditional on those assumptions actually being true. Now, what if those assumptions aren't true? What actually happens then, okay? Or how bad is it that an assumption might not be true, right? Is that is if we, if we break the assumption that the errors are, are homoscedastic, is that gonna be a small problem or is that gonna be a big problem? Uh, further, maybe there's an estimator that we're using that we just don't really understand how it works. Uh, so for example, maybe we are doing an instrumental variables regression and we're like, well, how does this actually function? Like if I move the parts around, what's going to happen? Well, you can answer a lot of these questions by doing a simulation. Now, what I mean by a simulation, and you can call this a Monte Carlo simulation if you like, is we're going to make up some data. We're going to make up some data, okay? And, the, and then we're going to run our estimator on that data and see what happens. Okay. Now, the reason we're going to do this is because when we create our own data, we know what the truth is, right? When we run our OLS regression and we get an estimate of beta of, let's say, 2.5, well, is that the right answer? I don't know, right? We don't know if that's the right answer because we don't know the actual true model that was used to create the data. But in this case, we're going to make up our own data so that we do know the truth. And then here's the key. We're going to see if our estimators give us back the truth. If I know that the true value of beta is, let's say, 1, and then I run an estimator, and that estimator tells me that it's actually 1.5, I don't have to wonder, is it actually 1.5? I know that it's 1. I know that the estimator is wrong, right? And so what this allows me to do is things like find out, oh, if I break this assumption, it's, giving, it's going to give me back the wrong answer which is a valuable thing to know. So this is a very good thing to apply if you, uh, A, want to see how breaking a particular assumption about your data will mess up your results and how bad it's going to be, or if you just want to try out an estimator and sort of see what it looks like and see how it works under the hood, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about omitted variable bias. This is probably something that you learned about in your class. So you know if the independent variable is correlated with the error term, you're going to get a biased coefficient on your variable, right? So let's break that assumption and see how bad it is, okay? So what we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna create some random data. So uh, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, uh, so I'm gonna imagine the models that I'm gonna be trying to run. I'm just gonna write these down, these aren't code. Uh, so I've got my, my variable x, I've got my variable uh, y as my outcome variable, and that's gonna be a function of x and some error term, okay? Now I want, uh, x and the error term to be correlated with each other. So I'm going to actually split this error term into two pieces. I'm going to split it into something, I'm, I'm going to split it into uh, error one, and I'm going to split it into error two, okay? Now, error one, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that, that's, that x is correlated with error one. I'm, in fact, I'm going to make x equal to error one plus some sort of noise, some sort of a uh, random noise, okay? Now, when I do this, right, I'm going to create x. x is going to have error 1 in it. And then y is also going to have error 1 in it. So x is going to be correlated with the error term, and we're going to have omitted variable bias. Okay? Now also, because I just have y equals x here, in fact, let's have y equals 1.5 times x. So if I run OLS and it gives me back 1.5, then I know that it did its job properly because the true value of beta is 1.5. Okay? So let's actually do this. So we're going to actually need to use R's uh, commands for creating random data, 
okay? Uh, and these are pretty easy. There's, there's a whole family of them. Uh, so for example, one is going to be R norm. So let's look at help R norm. It's going to create random data. There's a whole family of them. So R norm will create data from the ran from the normal distribution. R f will create data from the f distribution. Uh, R Poisson will create data from the Poisson distribution. There's a whole family of them. Any different sort of uh, distribution that you can think of, it can do. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's just make all of our errors random. So let's let's first create error one. Error one. That's going to be some random noise. So we're going to say R norm, and I want let's say mm, five thousand observations in my regression. Okay. Uh, and let's you know have our mean. Uh, our mean is going to be zero. Our SD is going to be one. That's called the standard normal distribution. It's actually going to assume that that's what we're doing if we don't specify it. So let's just make it that. Okay, x is going to be equal to error one plus random noise. That random noise is also going to be some normal data. Uh, and then y is going to be x, which we already made. Error one, which we already made, and error two, which is going to be some more random data. Okay, so if I do this. Create error one, create x, create y, there we go. And then I can run my regression and see what happens. So let's do our OLS model, lm y as a function of x. Now notice I don't have to put the data argument in here uh, because they're not as a, those variables aren't part of a data frame, they're just sort of on their own. Uh, so I'm gonna create my OLS model and then I'm gonna go ahead and look at my OLS model. Okay, so my coefficient on x here uh, is not 1.5, it's 2, which is wrong, right? So I know that, my, that this omitted variable bias is actually going to be a big problem, not just a small problem, it's actually very, very wrong here, okay? Uh, so we know the omitted variable bias, if we break that assumption, it's not a trivial assumption, it's a pretty important one. Okay. Of course, I just, I just randomly ran it once. So a good thing to do with Monte Carlo simulation is to run it many, many, many times and see what happens, okay? So we're going to do this whole process thousands of times and see what the result is. All right. So we're going to do this with something called a for loop. Okay. Now what a for loop does, and this is something that you're going to see in any programming language, is it, it it's going to basically uh, do the same thing many, many times, as many times as I want it to. And I'm going to say for I in, let's say one, two, five thousand. So, and I'm going to use these curly braces right here. Now, what this is going to do is whatever code I put in between those braces, it's going to run those five, it's going to run that code 5,000 times. And each time it does it, it's going to set i, the, the variable i, to a different value. So it's, it's first going to say i is equal to 1, run the code. i is equal to 2, run the code. i is equal to 3, run the code, and so on. Right? And the, the fact that it's changing the value of i is handy because sometimes you might want to refer to the value of i. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this in here so that it's going to run my little simulation here 5,000 times, okay? Uh, now we have a bit of a problem in that uh, I'm, I'm overwriting my OLS model 5,000 times. And I don't want to just put the summary of the command in there because then I would have to look at 5,000 different regression objects in order to figure out what's going on. I don't want to do that. I want it, just, it, I want it to take the, the coefficient, that's my inter the part that I'm interested in, store it, and then at the end I want to look at all of them together. Okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a data frame called results. Okay? It's going to be data frame. Uh, and it's going to be uh, a variable, so my uh, x coefficient, I'm going to call it, I'm just going to set it equal to na, so it's not anything right now, okay? Uh, and I'm going to be able to store uh, my results in that data frame, okay? Uh, so if we look at the OLS model, if I, if I do the coef function on OLS model, okay, it's going to give me the coefficients, and if I ask it, for the x coefficient, right? So you can see that the 1.99 x coefficient is being spit out right there. So if I take this and I store it in that results data frame, uh, and in particular, if I store it in the ith row of the results data frame, by the end of, by the time I'm done, it's gonna have stored the first coefficient that I estimated in that first row. It's gonna store the second coefficient that I estimated in the second row. It's gonna store the third coefficient that I estimated in the third row, and so on. And then at the end, we can look at it all. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say results i, and I'm going to do all the columns, uh, is going to be that coefficient right there. 
Okay. Now I'm doing it this way where I'm, I'm looking at all the columns uh, because uh, in case you want to store more than one thing, maybe you want to store the standard error as well. You can do that very easily. In fact, let's do that. Let's store the standard error. I'm not going to look at it, but let's just store it. Uh, so let's go ahead and put the standard error in as the second thing there. Uh, now, a lot of the time, if you want to pull something out of a regression model, you're going to have to go looking for it. Uh, so, you know, often one thing you can do is the attributes command. Uh, so let's check where those standard errors are hidden. So let's go ahead and put in uh, the standard errors as the second part there. Uh, now, this is a little tricky to look for, but you can look for it on Google. But if we do summary OLS model and then pull out of that the coefficients, it's going to give us the whole coefficient table there. So if I go for the first row or the second row and the second column, right, second row as X, the second column is standard error, it's going to pull out that standard error for me. Uh, so I can pull that out and store it as the second element of results, which is going to be XSE. Okay, so if I run this, it's going to do my simulation 5,000 times. It's going to store the results of each simulation in one row of results. And then when I'm done, I'm going to be able to plot out the results and just see how they're distributed. Uh, so if you remember correctly, we can plot the density of something. And that will give us a nice distribution. Okay, so results just like that. Uh, let's go ahead and run our do loop. It's going to our for loop. It's going to take a little while to do all five thousand uh, of those. If you're going to want to get fancy, you could use the print command to have it uh, uh, remind you of sort of where you are in the loop. Um, but uh, yeah, in general, when you're doing a for command, it's not actually going to output anything. Uh, so you know, usually you know it might t give us the results of that linear model, but it's not going to do it here. So let's wait until it's done. It's done. So then let's go ahead and plot the results so we can see how uh, sort of the sample distribution of our uh, emitted variable bias plagued coefficient. Uh, so we can see that, you know, it basically never even gets close to the true value of 1.5. It's pretty much centered around 2. Uh, so this is the distribution across the different random simulations that we ran. So it looks like about half the simulations that we run, it's going to give us a result above 2. About half the simulations is going to give us a result below 2. Uh, in a very small proportion, it's going to be lower than like 1.96. It's basically going to be 2, right? That omitted variable bias is a pretty strong thing that we have here. Uh, so this we've done for omitted variable bias, but you can do it for any number of things. Uh, it's really a versatile way of checking what happens when you break one of the assumptions of your estimators and then just see how much of a problem it is. So what else could you try with this? Well, you could see what happens if you try to use an instrumental variable that uh, doesn't really affect the endogenous variable. Or what happens uh, if you use an instrumental variable that's correlated with the error term, which is not supposed to be. Or, I don't know, what happens uh, if you try to use a Heckman model uh, where you have a, you know, you, you, where you um, uh, don't have some sort of uh, instrument in the, in, the, in the selection model, right? All sorts of things that you could do and just see what kinds of problems it causes you or get a better sense of how your estimators actually work. All right. That's how you can run a simulation. Uh, that's it. And the next video, we'll start getting into the tidy verse. Thank you.